जय हो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम रत्नाकर सूर्यवंशी फ्रॉम एस के पब्लिक स्कूल इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द की फीचर्स ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन राइट सो टुडे वी विल रिवाइज वन मोर टाइम व्हाट वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन द होल लेसन कॉल्ड द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से इन दिस लेसन वी हैव लर्न फर्स्ट अबाउट व्हाई डज अ कंट्री नीड अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन व्हाट वी लर्न why does a country why does a country need a constitution so about this we have already learned right even many points i told you that why does a country need a constitution because of various reasons right a country need a constitution so that the misuse of the power by the government against the citizens can be avoided and to protect the citizens themselves to protect the citizens from themselves also there is a need of a constitution right even to protect the citizens from the domination of other groups or from the dominations of by the people of their same group for this purpose also there is a need of constitution right so about all the things about all the reasons why does a country need a constitution about this we have already learned and after this what we have learned in this chapter the second main concept of this chapter is is key features the main key features of the indian constitution what the key main key features of the indian constitution see all together all together there are five major key features to the indian constitution so which are those first one federalism we learned first one about the federalism federalism means what existence of more than one level of the government existence of more than one tier of the government is called federalism why india is a federal country because in india power has been shared among the various tiers various levels of the government correct no so three levels of governments we have at present union government that is also called as central government then state governments and then local self governments or local governments right so among these three levels or three tiers of the government the powers are distributed then we learned about the parliamentary form of government what we have learned the second key feature of the indian constitution the second key feature of the indian constitution is a parliamentary form of government then what is this parliamentary form of government parliamentary form of government means elections are held regularly and and representatives are elected by the people representatives are elected by the people only those representatives can take the major decisions about the country so that system is called as a parliamentary form of government right so our parliament our parliament has two houses which are those two houses lok sabha and rajya sabha right rajya sabha is called the upper house and lok sabha is the lower house of the parliament members of the lok sabha members of the lok sabha are directly elected by the people and the members of the lok rajya sabha members of the rajya sabha are indirectly elected by the people so this is about the second key feature of the indian constitution that is parliamentary form of government then the next one is the third main key feature of the indian constitution is separation of powers which one separation of powers i mean how the power has been divided among the three organs of the government do you know or not which are the three organs of the government legislature executive and judiciary legislature executive and judiciary these are the three organs of the government among these three organs of the government the powers have been distributed powers have been shared and how these three organs works as checks and balances against one another about this also we have learned and then the fundamental rights it is the fourth main key feature of the indian constitution which one fundamental rights say there are six fundamental rights 
guaranteed by the Indian Constitution to all the citizens of India, right? Which are those six fundamental rights? Right to equality, right to equality, right to freedom, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right against exploitation, then cultural and educational rights, cultural and educational rights, and then fifth one, fifth one, freedom of religion, fifth one is freedom of religion, and the sixth one, and the sixth one, sixth one is constitutional remedies, which one constitutional remedies, these are the totally six fundamental rights guaranteed by the Indian constitution to all the citizens of India. Then the last one, last main key feature of the Indian constitution is secularism. Which one? Secularism. Then what do you mean by secularism? Secularism is a state which doesn't support or promote any one religion as the state religion. Secularism is a state that doesn't support any one religion, doesn't promote any one religion as the state religion. That state is called as secular state. India is a secular country because of this. Why? Because our India or our government doesn't support any one religion or it do not promote any one religion, doesn't promote any one religion. So, this is why India is called as secular country. Why Sri Lanka is not a secular country? Because Sri Lanka promotes officially only one religion that is Buddhism. Sri Lanka has a state religion which is that Buddhism. That's why Sri Lanka is not a secular country. India is a secular country because India doesn't have any one religion as a state religion. It doesn't support officially any one religion. So that's why India is a secular country. So these are the five main key features of the Indian constitution that we have learned. So this is the end of the lesson. The first political science lesson that is the Indian constitution. Thank you. Jai Hind.